Midland County Public Libraries. Today, I will be reading a snippet of Twin Enchantment by Elise Allen. Chapter one. Bong, bong, bong. Again and again, the bell in the castle's highest turret bonged, and with each repetition, the knot in Sarah's stomach tightened. She was late, supremely late, unprincessly late, and there was absolutely no way she could make it across the fields, past the stables, through the gardens, and up the endless steps to the throne room's balcony before the tenth bong of the bell. No way at all. Unless she ran faster than she'd ever run in her life, she took a deep breath, then sprinted top speed for about a second. Then she tripped over the hem of her skirt and belly flopped onto the grass. Ugh, she groaned. This is the worst. She dragged herself to her feet and peered down at her favorite rose red dress. Grass stains all down the front, of course. Worser than worst. For a second, Sarah considered blowing off the weekly address entirely but that would be an even huger disaster. Every time she went to one of Colune's county festivals and spent time among her people, they always told her how much they loved the weekly address. They said they eagerly awaited that reliable break in their work week, which made them feel connected to the royal family, even when there was nothing to report. If Sarah didn't show up, Colunians would worry, and they'd talk, and no matter how much Colune loved her, some people would definitely spread stories about where Princess Wilsera had been instead, and Dad would hate that. Of course, the truth was, they'd talk anyway once she flew in with a stained dress and nightmare hair that burst from its braids like straw and an overstuffed mattress. Still, better to be there than not. Sarah gripped her skirt in her fists and ran with her eyes pinned to the ground so she wouldn't miss any stray roots or holes. She was a princess by birth, but as her mother never failed to point out, Sarah was also queen of uncoordination. She cursed herself for letting time get away. She hadn't meant to. She'd spent the morning with a sketch pad in the Rose Garden, specifically so she'd be close at hand while she waited for the weekly address. But then she'd heard high-pitched giggles and looked up to see two little kids playing hoodle hoop. Hoodle hoop! How fun was that? The small boy and girl each had a hoodle hook and used it to roll the hoop back and forth between them. And they just looked so free and happy that Sarah wanted to capture it on paper. But then the kids ran off, rolling the hoodle hoop as they went. And the only way Sarah could finish her drawing was to chase after them. Normally, she'd have needed a cleverly crafted plan to slip away from all the servants and Rowan, the family's officially assigned keeper. But when Sarah looked around, she realized that for this one blissful moment, she was alone. Was someone slacking on the job? Was something exciting going on somewhere else in the castle that had everyone's attention? Sarah didn't know, and she didn't care. She tucked her sketch pad and charcoals into her satchel, slung the bag over her shoulder, and ran after the kids, keeping a safe distance, of course. She wanted to catch them in full hoodle hoop action, not losing their minds over the princess. She ran until they lost their breath and collapsed red-faced and panting and giggling in the grass, which was an even better picture than the game. So Sarah ducked into a cluster of bushes and drew as quickly as she could. When she was done, she still should have had plenty of time to get back, but it turned out that the bushes she'd hidden in were covered in thorns. While she'd sketched, they'd hooked into her braids. The second she tried to stand, the thorns yanked her back by the head. She'd spent an eternity slowly unhooking herself and wincing and sucking her fingers as the barbs pricked her skin. But finally, finally, she got free. And that's when the bells started longing. Sarah stared at the castle, still so far ahead. She twisted her skirts around her fists one more time, hoisting them just a little higher. She couldn't trip again, couldn't lose more time. She just had to pass the stables and then Sarah saw the boy a second before she slammed into him. He was nothing but a flash of black clothes and light skin coming out of the stables, and she had no time to stop before, oof, they both tumbled to the ground, Sarah flat on top of him, which was good, she guessed, because at least her dress wouldn't get any dirtier. Hey, get off! 
Sorry, 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 Sarah said. She tried jumping lightly to her feet, but the move turned into more of a rolling flop and ungainly crawl. Then she looked down at her victim, sprawled spread eagle on the grass. She gasped. Galric? The boy's eyes grew to giant moons and his milky face turned five shades paler. He scrambled up awkwardly, a wild jumble of knees and elbows, then backed away several steps and bowed low. Princess Lucera, he said. My humblest apologies. I, I never should have spoken to you that way. Or at all. I'm sorry. Don't be, Sarah said. You didn't do anything wrong. And yet she flushed as she said it, because of course his father had done the worst possible wrong, and they both knew it. You can get up, Sarah said. It's okay. Galeric rose, but he kept his head down so his stringy black hair stayed fluffed over his face. He was a few inches taller than Sarah, and she knew he was a couple years older. I should go, Galeric said. People could be watching. The keepers of the light? Galeric flinched so violently Sarah had to laugh. It's not like they come when I call. Or I mean, I guess they would, but I'm not calling. She leaned closer to Galeric, and her voice dropping to a whisper. Now it was her turn to flinch. It was treasonous for even a princess to say such a thing. And Sarah knew better than to blurt out everything she thought, even if she wanted to. Galeric looked around to see if anyone was watching, then said, I guess when you're a princess, you don't have to be scared of anything. I wish, Sarah said. And in that second, she wanted to tell him exactly what scared her, which was ridiculous, of course. Out of everyone, he was positively the last person she should tell anything. It's just that, for as long as Sarah could remember, everything she'd said had been supervised. Her family was around, or Prinka, her tutor, or Katya, her nurse, or Rowan and the other keepers, or just whole groups of Colunians who hung on her every word and would pick up on anything she said or did that didn't fit into what their princess Lucera would do. But here, she was just with Galric, and despite his dad's history, he was just a regular boy. She studied his face. He looked curious and attentive. Sarah got the feeling that if she did speak her mind, he wouldn't judge. He'd just listen. She opened her mouth to start, but then she shook her head. I'm sorry, she said. I'm late. Weekly dress and all. Already started. Dot, dot, dot. If that piqued your interest at all, this book is available on one of our online services, Hoopla. Um, it has concurrent checkouts, so you never have to wait in line for any book you want to check out. It's immediate. You get five checkouts per month with your library card. And tune in next week for another middle grade book preview.